Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with Horse Racing Tips for Sunday the 2nd of June. Well, it was a very disappointing Epsom Derby day. Um, the entire bet wasn't very good. Um, some of them ran better, but didn't actually reach the frame. A couple of them was, um, I think, just one place out of the frame, but yeah, it was dreadful, to be fair. Um, let's get on to Sunday. So it's just a very small stakes day. It's a 10 pence each way. Lucky 15 and a pound each way accumulator. First of all, congratulations to Flat Cat Callum um, on his new arrival. And I always like to see some interesting channels come back. And um, I know he's gone. I know he's gone away again now, but um, interesting to see him post a video. Um, so yeah, let me get on to Sunday's bet. So it's one of them where we're going to need a little bit of a look um, because all things are taken on trust. So let me get into it. So the first selection is Polling Day at 8 to 1 in the 2 o'clock at Fakedom. There's an awful lot of horses, a shorter price than this, that have got question marks over them. But also this horse has a question mark over it because it's the first time it's over jumps. But I like the fact that it's gone from Godolphin. Um, I can't remember who trained it, either whether it was Sia Vinsor or, or uh, Charlie Appleby. But it's now gone to Archie Watson, very interesting trainer over jumps. Um, it's travelled a fair way. I think it's three and a half hours. I think it's travelled. Um, never run over hurdles before. A bit in and out on on the flat, but as pretty much as nearly as good as a favourite on flat form. Um, hopefully it's improved. Nick Schofield is, is normally known for like presenting jumpers well at the hurdles and, and chase fences. Um, I hope it's not a schooling session, but the fact that they've gone to thank them uh, for a, an OK flat horse tells me that this horse has got quite a lot of speed and uh, wants to utilise fake them. Well, if it's held up in last place, I'm not confident. But if, if it's in third or fourth place um, or jumps, even jumps off in the lead, it tells me they're a little bit confident about its jumping and its ability. The favourite this question marks over, I think it's called Cannon Rock. But equally, you can say this about this horse. Um, You've then got a couple of horses with jumping form um, towards the front of the market. But they, um, I think one of them that was formerly trained by Paul Nichols, I can't remember the name of the horse now, but I think it wants further. It, it, it's also been run over two and a half miles on the flat and two miles. It has, I think it's got the best form on her, um, best form over hurdles. However, I think it wants further and it could be found out at Fakenham. And there are a couple that are coming off a, a long, long-ish absences. There is one that I like the look of, and it was the Kevin Frost train horse, horse number one, Bristol City, I think, Bristol, Bristol something. However, it was held up last last time, or held up towards the rear. If the same happens again, it'll, in my opinion, it'll just purely be a schooling session. Um, so interesting to see how they run that horse. But yeah, as I said, my selection is polling day. The second selection is Make a Scene at 12 to 1 in a 250 at Nottingham, paying four places instead of three. This is a Jonathan Portman horse. Whee! So I think we've got an OK record with Jonathan Portman. He's done well in his Ackers in the past. He's also popped up at decent prices, as he did at Epsom on Friday. Uh, make a Scene, so at 12 to 1 and 250 at Knots. So it, another one that's travelled a fair way. Um, so this horse, it ran okay over a mile at Windsor on its reappearance. It then went to Newbury, which is not too far from where the train of trains, and never better than mid-division. It's now dropped back to two-third on, back to a mile where it ran at Windsor originally on its debut. There are hints of form on the all-weather that could give it a chance as well. Um, there are tracks closer by for the trainer, but it's travelled this distance. Um... I do think he could at least get a place if they're interested in getting a place, or, or unless they've got some kind of... Hey, oh. Hey, oh. In a poor race, I think he could sneak a place. That, that's the top and tail of it. The third selection is Pittsburgh at 17-2 to 2 in the 10 past 3 at Fakenham, paying four places instead of three. This horse ran in this race last year. Uh, it tends to be quite keen. And also, Sean Bowen rode it this time last year. Um, 
it were a little bit disappointing last time. I believe it was at Hereford. Um, the time before, it was um, it was rushed up or it took hold um, when it, there was an amateur on board. You could you can put a line through that anyway. It basically made made a mid race move after after five furlong I think or four furlong, um, and then it gave itself no chance. <coughs> that was on the flat last time at Hereford. It seemed to lose, lose a little bit of interest. Um, it was keen early on, and then um, I think it was Sean Bowen on it as well that day. But they returned to a track where uh, you can sometimes get away with running a little, a little bit keen because it's faint. I mean, it's, it's a very flat, sharp track. Um, hopefully, when it ran last year, it got cheek pieces and a tongue strap on. This time it's got tongue strap on, no cheek pieces. <clears throat> so, interesting horse, 72. The fact that it ran in the race last year as well, definitely interesting. And it was shortly after this time last year that it ran. It began to run well again. Um, and I think it it won at Market Reason or King Second. Then it won after that as well. So it's ready to, in my opinion, it's been tuned up and it's ready to run well. In my in my opinion, it's it, the paying first four and it's a poor race. And finally, high opinion at eleven to two in the three twenty five at Nottingham, paying four places instead of three. This horse has won off a one pound higher mark. At Nottingham over course and distance, the ground was slower that day, and I think I think Nottingham is obviously I don't live a million miles from the track. No, I don't. I don't live a million miles from most tracks. Well, no, I don't live that far away from the track. I'm not exactly knocking on the door, but um, so for me, Nottingham, it's always best to have a horse, ideally with course form if you can. Um, it you think it's a flat track, but there's it's like it's like a a mini, a mini roller coaster at, at times. It's it's a funny course. You can't really see it, but I won't, I won't call it a ripper or anything like that where it's really awkward. But it can tend to catch horses out sometimes. Um, <clears throat> the fact that this horse has ran, um, sorry, won on this track before is a bonus. Um, the trainer's going oh well. Uh, okay, this horse has got quite a lot of speed, so he will be up, up with the pace. And it should also have, I believe, stall two will be drawn more towards the middle of the course. I prefer that. Um, I think you need to be more towards the middle of the course and definitely up with the pace. And I think being up with the pace and being a course and distance winner, you know what to expect as in like the humps and hollows. Um, I think also that might be travelling well behind, could be caught out by um, not not quite be able to quicken and catch the leaders in front. So we uh, 11 to 2, it's got a chance. I'm not particularly keen on the jockey, but it'll do. It's Andrew Breslin claiming three. It's like he's been claiming three for the last 20 years. So anyway, those are the four selections. You can give me a like or a subscribe. I really appreciate it. The very best of luck. Charlie Winters, over and out. Cheers, mate.